Hi, welcome to Backyard Music at Fireside Harps. I'm going to quickly show you here how to assemble one of the dulcimers of Backyard Music. So here uh, we have the sound box and we have the fretboard and uh, really the first thing, best thing to do when you're starting to build your dulcimer is to paint the sound box. Um, I'm not going to show you how to paint it here because it's pretty simple but you want to you know paint the outside and it's best to also paint um, the inside of the box and then you set it aside and you let it dry. So here, here's the fretboard and um, before you before you put the hardware onto the fretboard it's best to uh, put some kind of finish on the fretboard. I use 100% tongue oil. Other people use, use linseed oil, you can use minwax. Some, some, form of, uh, some form of oil would be nice for the fretboard to just uh, help it preserve and give a sealant on it. And the, also, the, the other trick with that is that you do not oil the back of the fretboard where it gets glued onto the sound box. Obviously, it's going to glue better if it's not oiled. A little bit of oil can get on it, but you want to wipe it down and uh, make that as dry a surface for gluing. So now, we'll start assembling uh, the fretboard that's been oiled. And here it is, and we have the hardware. And the first thing that I do with the dulcimer is I, I put in the nails down here at, at, this, at this end. And so what I do is um, I tend to, I like to be able to pre-drill the hole, the hole for the nails and for the screws because um, this is ash and uh, it's a little bit of a harder wood. I would, uh, it would be hard to just, harder on the nails if you just tried to tap them in so it's best to pre-drill so i just i just drill three holes here on the underside of the of the fretboard i always start with the middle here and one on each side you don't want to go all the way through you don't have to go all the way through but if you go in about you know about half an inch that's going to be enough and then you're going to take these, the, the little brass nails that are in the package and you're going to tap in the nails. You should be able to get it looking like that. Um, for folks that use uh, four or more strings, well, obviously this is the time to add another another anchor nail. But this one's just going to be a three string, so, so that's that. So then the next thing to do is to turn the fretboard up on its side. Remember now you've oiled it, and the, except for the back. You're getting it re you're getting ready to glue it. So what you're going to do now is um, is we're going to put in uh, the tuning gears. <clears throat> now often enough. Uh, if you get a dulcimer kit from me, most most of the time I, I use that same drill bit, that 1 16th, and I pre-drill the holes for the, for the tuning gears. And you're going to see that with the tuning gears, there's two that are the same and one that is the opposite way. Obviously, that's going to be for the other side. But I start with these two. If the holes were not pre-drilled for you by me, then I suggest that you get in there with that same drill bit that you used for down there and drill those holes. But I'm not going to because I've done so many. So here I get the screw on and I hold the, the tuner straight and I put the screw in. Just gently like that. Get another screw. This can be done by hand. Again, I just I've had this, this drill for so long, and I've done so many of these, but it can be done by hand or with your electric drill. With your electric drill, though, you want to just tend to be a little gentler with it, that it doesn't just go so hard that it strips the, strips the screw and whatnot, but this is what you're trying to do. You see how I'm drilling the holes in, screwing the screws in. Okay, now we have these two in here. So you're going to flip it over like this. And then take this one and the trick again with to remember when you're when you're putting the gears on the on the fretboard is that when you put the gears on you want the the brass gear to be facing down the length of the of the neck of the, of the fretboard. So you see that the gear is on this side. 
And so also on this side, it's the opposite, but yet it's still the gear is on this side going down this way. That's how you decipher which, which tuning gear goes where. And you put in some screws. So we just finished putting the, the, the two screws in this left hand tuner and now we're going to be ready to glue it to the sound box. So uh, we're going to put the fretboard aside, we're going to grab the, the sound box, which um, as I told you, you painted before and you've let it dry, you've given it ample time to dry. And so uh, you got your sound box and the first thing you want to do is you want to pop out these hearts. And it's best to pop them from the outside in. Um, so then if any tears happen in the cardboard, it happens on the back side. But so you pop, you, you pop the hearts out. How many hearts I've broken here? I don't know. Years popping those hearts out. So you got the hearts, you can throw them away. And then you're gonna put it back on its outside, on the finished side. And you, you're gonna fold on these seams. And when you want to fold them, you don't want to fold them like till they're flat in the in the back. You just want to crease them because you you want you want them to be able to spring back like that. You want them. So here again on this seam and that seam, I'm folding, and then I take these tabs on the end and I just fold them up. Sometimes the paint makes them stick, so you just fold these tabs and down at the other end. You just fold the tabs. You pre-fold them. So now you've got your box folded and ready to ready to be glued together, but you want to put glue on the fretboard first. So I turn the fretboard over on, on, the, on the sound box and I do a bead of glue right down the middle. And then I, and then I, 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 I spread it out a bit with my finger. And with the fretboard, you, you, you really, you, while you need glue, you don't need a whole lot. Cause as I said before, there's not a lot of, uh, tension on the fretboard in connection to the box. It doesn't need a lot of glue to stay flat on the box. And I put the fretboard right there and then I start to fold this. And I fold this tab like this. And then I take the glue again and I put a little bit of dab of glue on that, that top that's going to fold in. And I put some there for the tabs. And down at this end, while I still hold this, I put, put some glue across here. And then I'm going to fold up like that. I'm going to put the, fold the two of them together like that. And then fold that up. And then I use my thumb and I hold it. It's easier to do this if you have two people because then you've got four hands. It's much easier with, with, with two people. But again, I've done this so many times that this is how I do it by myself. So when, when I have this tab held so the box is not going to spring apart, I go down to this end with my right hand. And I pull that tab in and that tab in and then it lets me grab that and I reach up, fold it over like that. And then I just bring these down a little bit like this and again this is one man dulcimer gluing. It's easier with two but this is one. And so I take my glue again and under this tab here I put a bead of glue just right across. And then on this end too just a bead of glue. And that's just going to glue it shut when it gets when it gets folded. And now that I've got the glue on and and the glue on the fretboard, I close the box like this. And then I take the holding it with one hand again. You turn the grab the fretboard, you turn it over, and then the end that's where the strump where the where the bridge is going to be. You sort of just press it down on the box right on that seam that's between the two. And then you press the press it down. Just like that. So here's how you start. The, the, you got glue on the back of the fretboard. The box is glued. And now what you want to do is you want to secure, secure this uh, fretboard to the box. Um, and the way that I do it here in the shop and, um, is I have, these, I have these straps that I use all the time. You could use zip ties, or you could use heavy books, or gallons of paint, or you can uh, you can also meditate and just stand here and hold it for a little while till it stays. So, but this is what I do. I've got the fretboard on there, and then I take the dulcimer, and I take this strap, and I put it on, slide it down, and then I and then I do the next one. 
and then I pull the strap so it's a little snug and then I go down this end and I snug it some more if you have a kit for me you probably have one of these straps and you can use the strap for the same purpose but you're only going to have one it'll be it'll reach you about this this far down but that's that works now another thing when you're gluing it look I just put the straps on and it's sort of like lopsided so I have it on a flat table I just I push the corners and it flattens it right out so into the surface of the table then another thing I do is I snug these a little more because you want the dulcimer you want the fretboard to have contact a good strong contact and then I also take a look at the at the back of the fretboard and I make sure that this seam, where the two tops met into the seam, is right in the center of the fretboard. Because then you know your fretboard is centered. So it's centered up here. I turn it around and I look at this end. And it's centered right there. And you can use, if it's off center, you can push the, with your fingers, you can push the fretboard from left to right. But you want to try to get it as centered as you can. And then again, back on the table, give it another push just to square it off. And you've got your hardware on, your nails on, the fretboard is now glued to the sound box, and you're going to walk away from it for about an hour or so, at least an hour. The dulcimer is all glued now, and you've put the hardware on, you put the three nails underneath, and the, the hardware on the other side, you glued it on, it's ready to be strung. So down here near the strum hollow, this is, uh, you should have a, a black plastic piece, um, and that's going to be what we call the bridge. And uh, to, fit the, to fit the bridge into that slot, you have to do a little bit of sanding often enough. Sometimes they fit, but most of the time lately, we, you can literally take a piece of sandpaper. Um, I use 80 grit, and you're just going to push it back and forth a little bit. It doesn't take much at all, and flip it over, and then try to fit it in, and you might have to do a little bit more. Um, so that's how you're going to get that to thickness to fit in this slot. And then another thing you'll be able to do with this sandpaper is the height of this of of the bridge because it'll allow you to adjust the height. And like I just was sanding it on its side. Later on, when we've after we've have it all strung, you'll want to check the site and you can take it back out. And then if you sand it back and forth like this on its lower edge, you'll be able to lessen the height. So we have the bridge and it fits into the slot. And it should go in like that after a little bit of sanding as I said to, to do that and then it's going to be the same thing with the other end um, now the spacer that's called a spacer that has these three slots in it what what those are those are those are the guides for the string for the three strings at the other end and again if you've got four strings and you'll see the extra slots um, but this is a three string dulcimer so it's got some slots and we're gonna sand it just like I said before and then we're going to fit it into the other end of the box right up there so we've got the we've got the spacer in and we've got the bridge in so now it's time to string it now when I string it I always start with with uh, with the base string which is the one farthest from me and you've got a loop end uh, on the end of the string and so you literally I use my fingers and I feel that nail underneath and I loop that loop the string on that nail and I bring it up like that and it's it's best to hold some tension on the string you don't have to pull it really 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 hard but you just want because if you don't keep tension on it then it's liable to pop off your nail down this way so as you're coming as you're coming up, uh, if you see what I'm doing with my right hand, I'm sort of holding tension. And then that lets me use my left hand <clears throat> to guide the end of the string through, through, through the hole that's on this pin, on this, on this tuning gear. This is the first one. This is going to be for your bass string. So you put it through that hole, you push it through. So now it's through that hole, and you can push it then into this guide like that and I'm still notice how I'm holding my hand I'm sort of holding it you know like on an angle so I've got tension on the string behind me and I've got some tension on the string in front of me so it's not so floppy but and then I'm going to uh, take my drill I'm, again I'm going to use a drill but you can if you don't have a drill you can literally turn turn this 
tuner, you want to turn it counterclockwise, and then that's going to make the string go under the pin by turning it counterclockwise. That's how you would do it if you don't have uh, <clears throat> a, uh, a fixture for your drill. But this is what I'm going to do, and this is what you can find these if you're building a lot of dulcimers. It sure makes it quick. gently and you see how it's creating the tension on my on the string and then as you get down to it tight enough you can again go back to tuning it by hand so that's just the first string and you've got this excess you got this excess sticking out so you use a wire cutter and you clip off the, the end of it as close to the pin in there as you can so we got the bass string on and now we're going to do the melody string, and the melody string is the string that's closest to uh, the player, so it's the one closest to me. So again, I'm going to loop, loop it on this first nail, the nail closest to me, bring it up. So the trick here is that you uh, make this, have this, have this string go under the first pin that you just put the bass on. Um, it just helps to be able to uh, to crease the string better um, and. So you go under the first pin, and then up into the hole of this pin here, the one closest to you. And then, again, you're going to start to turn it. And when you're, when you're doing these especially, you want them to have four or five winds. That's going to help the string from... If you do like two or three winds of the string around the pin, it, it could slip on you, and then it sort of makes it really hard to, 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 to tune this to tune the string when it keeps slipping. So I, I allow four or five. And again, I'm gonna just jump in here quick and use this drill and you can see how it's turning that. And again, the tension's out. And so I'm gonna fit that in that in the slot there. And then it's like... So we have that first string on. You don't really have to worry about tuning them right now. It's just the 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 thing to do now is to make sure that you get the strings on and that the spacer is going to be, you know, centered in there and that the bridge is going to be centered. Sometimes if the, the spacer moves back and forth too much when you're tensioning the strings, you can, you can take it back out and you can put some glue in there too. Some glue in there will eventually dry and then, um, and then lock it where you, where, where it should be. So, um, so that's sort of getting, starting to get tuned. So we have the bass string and we have the melody string. So now we're going to do the, the middle string. And so we're going to, we're going to hook it <clears throat> right on right on this middle nail. And again, bring it up. Try to keep it in the middle there. And the, again, my right hand is holding it secure. And like I did with the melody string, you go under all the pins. You don't want to just go over the top of them. You want to go under that pin in the front, and that's going to keep it under the, the, the pin in the middle. And then you're going to come back up through that hole. And again, you're going to leave slack. Slack for being able to get um, four or five wraps here. said as it gets closer to being being tight you put that aside you just so it's not slipping so you get in there and clip so now you've got the strings on but here's where you have to tune them so I give them a good little stretch and the way that I do that is because it just helps it's going to help them tune quicker I just I use my my hands like this and I don't pull them really hard but I'm just stretching it a little bit and it's out of tune, but coming into tune. And I, I give this one a stretch to the middle string. So now we have the dulcimer all strung and ready to be tuned up. And you've got the strings evenly spaced. Your, your bass is the farthest string. The melody string is the string closest to you. And then you've got your middle string. So um, and with, the, with the backyard uh, dulcimers, backyard music dulcimers, that bass string should be in a D. And if you've got an electronic tuner, that makes it really easy. There's other ways to tune it, but 
bring that bass string up to a D, and then the melody string, which is closest to you, again, I like to stretch it to help it tune better, but that also is going to be a D for the Mixolydian mode. There's different modes for the dulcimer. You'll discover that too, but we're going to tune this D-A-D. So here's the bass in D. Here's the melody in D, and that middle string is going to be an A. You've got a backyard music dulcimer built, ready to learn how to play.